Welcome, welcome once again to another Baptist Bread Daily Devotional, amen. And today is Saturday, November 16th, and it is 2019. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ went to the cross and died for our sins and was buried and rose again the third day according to Scripture. And he is the only one that can save your soul and wash away all your sins with his holy, precious blood. Amen. All right, well, this is Brother Scott bringing you these devotionals each and every day. And today's topic is titled, The Real You. And it's uh, scriptures from 1 Corinthians 1312C. I guess it's the, the third part. There's a uh, third part to uh, 1 Corinthians 13 and 12 and all the way down to the last part of the verse. And it says, But then shall I know, even as also I am known. So, uh, the author today is Tim Green, and he is... Um, from Revival in Our Time, Day Heights, Ohio. So Brother Tim Green is the one bringing us this devotional today. And he writes here, The brass laver made by Aaron and the priests was made from the looking glasses of the women of Israel. And that is Exodus 38, 8. So let's go read that really quick. So Exodus 38, 8, if you have your Bible handy and want to follow along. And turn to the scripture, so 38 and verse 8. So let's see here, 38, 8. We'll get there eventually. <laughs> All right, so 38, 8. And it says here down in the scripture on 38, 8. Let me see here. Uh, it says, And he made the laver of brass and the foot of it of brass of the looking glasses of the women assembling which assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. So he made it out of the looking glasses of the women. And then uh, Job 37, 18 speaks of a molten looking glass. So Job 37, 18. So let's go there. Job 37 and verse 18. All right. So 37, 18. Let's go down here. All right. 37, 18, and it says here, Hast thou with him spread out the sky, which is strong, and as a molten looking glass? So that's the molten looking glass, and Job 37, 18 speaks of molten looking glass. And he continues on, We would call these looking glasses mirrors today. Right, something that you look into to see yourself, because that's the only way you can see yourself. A mirror tells the unvarnished, uh, naked truth about the person gazing at the reflection in the mirror. Oh, ouch, yeah. It tells the unvarnished, naked truth about the person gazing at the reflection in the mirror. Oh, boy. There are two kinds of friends. Those that tell you how wonderful you are and those that tell the truth about you. Hmm. Yikes. <laughs> so two kinds of friends. Those uh, two kinds of friends are those that tell you how wonderful you are and those that tell the truth about you. The former are as thick as fleas and the latter are as rare as hen's uh, teeth. <laughs> it is nice to have compliments and receive uh, commendation, but to believe all the positive pl uh, platitudes is downright dangerous. Hmm. So downright dangerous. Every once, every once in a while, it is good to have someone who loves you to tell to just tell you the truth. Right. <laughs> so it's good to have someone who loves you to, to to just tell you the truth that we're all sinners and we all need to uh, crucify that flesh. <laughs> So, a good friend could tell you, like Nathan told David, and it could result in repentance and right living. Uh, so, so a good friend uh, could tell you, like Nathan told David, and it could result in repentance and right, righteous living. Nathan was an honest mirror that revealed and pointed out David's great fault and spiritual failure. Hmm. 
Yep. Now, uh, Brother Tim says, now I would not take up the mantle of Nathan's mirror-like ministry <laughs> if you are nothing but a fault-finding, fickle, faithless friend. <laughs> Try saying that to three times fast. <laughs> so he says, now I would not um, take up the mantle of Nathan's mirror-like ministry if you are nothing but a fault-finding, fickle, faithless friend. I use uh, friend lo uh, quite loosely there, he says. It might be good if we could choose our own mirrors to confront us with the areas that need attention in our lives. Yeah. <laughs> some, uh, some may choose to be funhouse mirrors <laughs> of life that give a false, unfortunate view of the things of life. What do you think? What do you think um, of this mirror? The Bible to reveal the real you. Yeah, so this Bible is like a mirror that reveals the real us and that and how we really are and how we really act and how we are to repent of those things and and be more Christ-like because it's uh, work. It takes work to be Christ-like, but it doesn't take any work at all to to uh, get in the flesh and let the flesh control you and uh, go the way of the flesh in the world. So it takes work to uh, be Christ-like. So let's work more at it. So again, what do you think uh, of this mirror, the Bible, to reveal the real you? Question mark. Like a young friend of mine often says about certain things, I like it. <laughs> you know, his friend says, his uh, young friend of uh, his says often about certain things, I like it. <laughs> Amen. So let's uh, look in that mirror, the Bible. The Bible is a mirror to show us and reveal our real selves, so uh, let's work on on uh, crucifying the flesh and the real you and let the Holy Spirit, which lives in you if you're saved, that is, and he works in you, let him work in you and let him continue to be on the throne and stop trying to uh, resurrect that flesh because it's supposed to stay dead. So once you're saved, it's a choice whether you go and uh, serve sin or serve uh, Christ. So let's take uh, heed to that. Amen. Um, all right. Well, that was the topic about the real you, the real me. <laughs> Amen. So let's take heed to these things and these warnings here about the mirror. The Bible is a mirror to show us our real selves and how we are supposed to live and how we're not supposed to live and to use the examples and in samples of all those men and women that uh, lived like this and not live like it and live uh, the righteous life and live the life that Christ wants us to live while we're on this earth. If you're saved, that is. If you're lost, the first thing you need to do is trust Jesus as your Savior and then he will teach you how to live a righteous, holy, and clean life. Amen. And not to fall or uh, go into sin. All right, well, that was it for the devotional part, the real you. So now let us get into the Bible reading for this morning, and we will be in uh, Hebrews chapter number 12 today. So let's turn there if you have your Bible with you. So Hebrews chapter 12, and let's start with verse 1. All right, it says here, Wherefore, seeing... We also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which, uh, which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus. I like this verse here. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. For consider him, so have you considered Jesus? For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Yeah, so let's consider him so we don't, so this doesn't happen. Ye have not yet uh, resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which 
speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Yeah, so let's uh, not despise the chastening of the Lord because he chastens us because he loves us. Those of us that are uh, saved, he chastens because he loves us and wants us to do right and live right. And so we should take that uh, chastening um, without complaining and murmuring. And when we're rebuked, um, not to faint. Uh, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, there you go, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye uh, be without ch chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. So that means that you're not uh, God's son if you're if he's not chastening you and you're uh, not saved yet. So, furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which correct us, corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much uh, rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. Amen. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down, and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Look diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, uh, lest any root of bitterness spring up trouble you, and thereby may many be defiled. So let's not let that root of bitterness spring up inside of us. If somebody does something that we don't like or something against us, let's not get bitter towards them uh, because they just wanted to go towards the way of sin or something like that. Um, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Right, he didn't uh, find uh, a place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched, uh, and that burned with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest, and the sound of a trumpet, and the voice of words, which voice that they that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them any more. So they were afraid of God's voice, so they didn't want him to speak to them any more. Uh, so they believe that was uh, back there in Moses' time, and they wanted Moses to speak for the Lord. For they could not endure that which was commanded, and if so much as a beast touch the mountain, it shall be uh, stoned or thrust through with a dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. But ye are come unto Mount Sion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the Judge of all, that's capital J Judge, that's one of his names, his titles, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Amen. Uh, see that ye refuse not him that speaketh, for if they escaped that who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape 
if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, uh, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he had uh, promised, saying, Yet once more I shall sh uh, sh I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. All right, so, amen. All right, well, there you have it. That was Hebrews chapter 12 for our morning reading today. And we just went over the topic on the real you, looking at the Bible, which is a mirror that shows us our real selves and how we're all sinners and we all come short of God's glory and how we need a Savior and how He will redeem us and uh, wash away all our sin. And then afterward, once we're saved, we are uh, to look in here and have the Lord show us how we're to live a Christ-like, holy, clean life while on this earth and not to resurrect that uh, old man, but to let the new man work in us and through us every day, each and every day, by praying without ceasing, by going out and witnessing, by reading and studying our Bible and being in fellowship with other believers who want to follow the Lord and to stay away from those that don't want to follow the Lord and want you to go by the wayside with them. So we should stay away from those type of people, uh, whether they be lost people or Christians. There are many Christians out there that profess that they're walking the right way and they just go and live however they want and they may, they may be saved, they might not be saved. You uh, don't know their heart, God knows their heart, but uh, they might have just called on the Lord to save their soul, but don't believe they have to live right, and they don't want God to to um, to control their lives and to help them to live a better life. They just want to go about and do whatever they want and keep sinning and living like the devil even after they're saved. So let's uh, find those that want to live the way of the Lord and want to follow the Lord and follow after those people and come with those people and fellowship with them and so forth and always to examine ourselves to make sure that we're doing everything right that the Lord wants us to do and those things that we struggle with that we would pray that the Lord would help us through those things and to repent of them and to throw them away <laughs> amen and not let this flesh get the best of us because after you're saved it's a choice as brother James has been preaching on over the last few messages talking about how we have a choice whether we're going to go back and live the old life or continue living in the new life. Amen. Because Christ is our life once we're saved and we should be living for him and walking the way he walked. Amen. While on this earth. But that doesn't, that doesn't save your soul or keep you saved. What keeps you saved is Jesus and he sealed you till the day of redemption. So if you decide to walk back the old way, he's not going to take away your salvation. You're still saved, but why would you want to keep sinning? Why would I want to keep sinning and going back to that old life, and those old, old ways and those old habits? But we are, are to, to work at it, to learn, to live in a Christ-like life every each and every day. Amen. All right. Well, that being said, let us get out there and do it. Amen. Not just be hearers, but doers of the word also. All right. Well, tomorrow's topic will be titled, Two Burrs or Just One? Question mark, And then we'll be in Hebrews chapter 13 for the morning reading or whenever I get um, able to do the, the devotional. We'll see what type of day. I might do it in the evening time when I get back from church because i got a busy day tomorrow with uh, church and ministries and all that stuff. So we'll try to do it either in the morning first thing or in the evening time. All right, so... Hope you'll stay tuned for that. All right, well, now next time, this is Brother Scott, and this has been the Daily Baptist Bread Devotional. And until next time, may the Lord richly bless you, and get in this word and read it. And remember, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved if you're not saved yet. And I'll be signing off for now, so bye-bye until next time.